ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, uh, Inessa, for inviting me to Riga to this conference, giving me the opportunity to say something about the constitutional process in Iceland following the collapse of the banks in early October 2008. To put things in context, I think it's necessary to give a brief overlook of the constitutional history of Iceland in modern times. Then I will try to make some connections between the ideas of consumer rights as human rights and the debate on constitutional changes in the years following the financial crash in Iceland in the autumn 2008. When Iceland became a republic on June 17, 1944, the concept of its constitution was very much in the making. The Second World War was then it in its uh, last phase and Icelandic politicians were aware of the possibility that their claim for independence from the Danish monarchy could be rejected or even forgotten in the political turbulence of the post-war times when the winners of the war would begin their wheeling and dealing about the construc construction of a new world order when the war was over. The Icelanders had since the middle of the 19th century fought a battle for their autonomy and self-determination and got their first limited constitution from the Danish king in 1874 based on the provisions of the Danish constitution from 1849, uh, Grunloven in Danish. In the so-called Union Act, a treaty between Iceland and Denmark from 1918, Iceland became a sovereign state in a monarchical union with the state of Denmark. On the basis of that treaty, Iceland got its first fully fledged state constitution two years later or in 1920. I'm not going to go into any further details of the constitutional development and history in the period uh, between 1920 and 1944, when Iceland became a republic, but uh, it should be mentioned and kept in mind that the new constitution uh, was approved, uh, the new constitution in 1944, was approved by 96% of all Icelanders in a re referendum. So if a one constitution can, be, can claim to be the social contract in a democratic state in later times or in general at all, uh, I think it can be said to be the Icelandic constitution from 1944. Uh, however, it has to be pointed out as well that the only novelty of the constitution were the provisions defining the role and status of the new head of state, the president of the Republic of Iceland and related articles. In the debate about the new constitution in 1944, within and outside of the parliament, it was clear that the expectations were that it would be reviewed entirely when the world had found some kind of peace again after the World War II. Even though world affairs did not prevent the further constitutional changes, directly conflicts and disagreements around the changes of the weight of the electoral uh, uh, constituencies in 1959, blocked any further development and changes of the constitutional for almost half a century. In 1991, the constitution was amended 
to change from uh, uh, the bicameral system into a single chamber system. And then finally in 1995, following the 50th anniversary of the Republic, the rather archaic provisions of human rights were revised. The human rights chapter of the Constitution had at that time not undergone any changes since Iceland obtained its first constitution in 1874. The changes in 1995 were meant to bring the human rights provisions in accordance with the major human rights treaties which Iceland had ratified, such as the International Con uh, Covenant on Political and Civil Rights and the Covenant uh, on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, and first and foremost the European Convention on Human Rights. This emphasis on the ECHRR was heavily criticized by NGOs and human rights lawyers who claimed that the UN human rights treaties did not find their proper place in the new provisions of the Constitution. In this context, it should be mentioned that in the debate on the changes of the human rights provisions in 1995, no word was lost on the consumer rights, neither directly nor uh, indirectly. It's also important of importance to mention that the general rule of constitutional changes uh, have been one of consensus uh, or unanimity. Only once did the majority carry through a bill with a strong resistance of one of the Party, political parties, and they ha have been four uh, most of the time. And that was in 1959, when the electoral system was changed in favor of the most populated area around Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. Even though no one did claim that the Constitution were a direct reason for the financial cra uh, crash in 2008, there was an outcry for its total revision and even a new Constitution in the months to follow. It took the new Parliament, uh, which came in into power, <laughs> Uh, in the early elections in spring 2009. Uh, it took uh, the parliament over a year to come to a consensus uh, and on June 16th in 2010 it passed a bill on a constitutional assembly to be held in the first months of 2011. In Article 3 of the Act on Constitutional Assembly, the tasks of the Assembly are described as follows. The Constitutional Assembly sh shall specifically, uh, specifically address the following. Uh, first, the foundation of the Icelandic Constitution and its fundamental concepts. Two, or secondly, the organization of the legislative and executive branches and the limits of their powers. Third, the role and position of the President of the Republic. Fourth, the independence of the judiciary and their supervision of other holders of governmental powers. Fifth, provisions on elections and electoral districts. Sixth, Public participation in the democratic process, include, including the timing and organization uh, of a referendum, including a referendum on a legislative bill for a constitutional act. Seventh, transfer of sovereign powers to international organizations, 
and the conduct of foreign affairs. Eighth and the last, environmental matters, including the ownership and utilization of natural resources. The Constitutional Assembly may decide to address additional matters to those referred to in the first paragraph. So you can say everything was kind of open. And just to explain uh, a little um, where I come into the whole process is that, uh, I will mention it later, the, uh, the, the parliament uh, elected uh, a committee, constitutional committee, to prepare the work of uh, the Constitutional Assembly mm -hmm. and uh, a national uh, forum of uh, thousand people of both sexes. Uh, and uh, we were seven and I was, uh, as I said, one of uh, those members. So that's uh, why I have been dealing with this more than uh, I would have otherwise. In the preparatory work of the Constitutional Committee, uh, this uh, I was uh, talking about, it was decided to stick to the direct uh, description of the original aims, uh, original aims of the Constitutional Assembly and leave out any changes of the human rights provisions from 1995. Of course, a revision of human rights provisions could have been proposed on the basis uh, of the points addressed, uh, the one about the foundations of the Icelandic constitution and its fu fundamental concepts. But the committee agreed that it would be proper only to move the human rights chapter uh, from being the chapter number seven, uh, or the second last of the constitution, into the front, so it would become the opening of the constitution, similar to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Germany from uh, 1949. The committee also made a proposal to add a provision to the constitution on human dignity. In the work of the Constitutional Committee preparing proposal for the Constitutional Assembly, the idea mentioning consumer rights in, the, in this context, uh, it is to say, as addition to the human rights, <coughs> which already had their place in the constitution, were never mentioned. So this is, uh, I went through all the uh, back documents and discussions and it's clear uh, this was never mentioned. Uh, even though the constitutional council, which replaced the constitutional assembly after the Supreme Court had uh, voided uh, the election of members of the assembly, did make proposals on quite some changes of the provisions on human rights. They neither did discuss the possibility of implanting consumer rights to the human rights chapter of the constitution. And uh, because I uh, wanted to know what I was talking about uh, coming here, I, I contacted uh, the director of the uh, Consumer Association in Iceland and she is a former uh, parliamentarian so uh, she knows uh, quite a lot about this. Uh, according to her it seems clear that no debate on proposing changes of that kind to the constitution have ever been discussed uh, in public in Iceland which is in itself quite interesting, I think. In my effort to try to localize the provisions in, in the constitutional proposal of the Constitutional uh, Council from uh, August 2011, 
which could have relevance for a debate on consumer rights as human rights in the context of constitutional changes in Iceland, I decided to make use of writings of Sina Deutsch and uh, an article in Osgood Hall Law Journal from 1994 with the name Are Consumer Rights Human Rights? and an article of Elias uh, Bantex uh, Consumer Rights as Human Rights in, uh, from 2012. Uh, in his effort to give an answer to the question if consumer rights should be considered as uni uh, universal human rights, uh, Deutsch comes up with two main approaches. Firstly, he, he to include as human rights only those rights declared as such by the institutions of the United Nations. This approach would, as Deutsch uh, points out, prevent for the time being consumer rights to be recognized as human rights. Secondly, and uh, a logical follow of that, he proposes the approach to establish guidelines to outline the char characteristics of human rights. And as he rightly says, uh, rights that fulfill these requirements would be considered to be human rights. According to Deutsch, human rights should, one, pertain to the entire human uh, community, Two, they are the characterization of the individual as primary concern, concern, emphasizing the individual's prosperity, honor, and development. And third, they are the rights of the individual against powerful governments. Consumer rights are rights of the individual as he say, and they are not the rights of a separate group of people since every person is a consumer from time to time. Uh, so according to that, consumer rights could as such be acknowledged as human rights. In a consumer, consumer society, protection of individual uh, consumer is a part of maintaining human dignity, uh, if not giving the right to fair trade, the right to fair contract, and the right of access to courts, a person's dignity may be disregarded. Deutsch points out that the latest development in globalizations, uh, globalization of com commerce has led to some international recognition of consumer rights by the United Nations and other international organizations. And that the, times, uh, that the time is ripe to go further and to recognize basic consumer rights as human rights. Uh, theory of Justice by John Rawls uh, uh, provides uh, a solid ground for admitting uh, consumer rights as human rights by recognizing principles of fairness, self-respect, and equality as the foundation for human rights. And another theory maintains that human dignity uh, is an ultimate value and one of the goals of consumer protections is protection of the dignity of the consumer. This could, according to Deutsch, serve as an additional support for defining consumer rights as human rights. In his article on consumer rights as human rights, Elias uh, Bantekas uh, approaches the question differently from that of, uh, of uh, Senai Deutsch, but comes to a similar conclusion claiming that uh, human rights language and ultimately, uh, ultimately human rights law has a significant role to play in understanding and interpreting <coughs> consumer relations. Finally, uh, to, con to 
connect those ideas of consumer rights as human rights to the constitutional process in Iceland, it is necessary to localize the type of human rights uh, which can be relevant in the context of protecting consumers uh, health, safety and economic interests. In that context, rights to information, expressing one's opinion, education, and to organize themselves in order to safeguard their interests, as well as the right to property, are clearly the most relevant ones. In the draft proposal for a new constitution passed by the Constitutional Con Council uh, in August 30th, 2011, all relevant provisions are in place, uh, beginning with the right to property, uh, Article 13, following the right to have and express opinions, then comes the right to information, the right to association, the right to assembly, social rights, as well as the rights to health service and the right, right to education, not to forget the freedom of enterprise and the right to residence and travel, and finally, the right to due process of law. I am sorry to say that the constitutional process in Iceland starting in 2010 until now have not managed to bear any concrete constitutional fruits. That is a sad thing, but uh, that's the fact. It is no question that this process was the most extensive experiment of its kind in Europe in later times. So it can only be regretted if it leads to nothing or only minor changes uh, of the, the, in many ways, archaic document, which the Icelandic constitution definitely is. It is, although possible, that opening up for a discussion on consumer rights as human rights in the context uh, in this context, may stimulate the debate and further the interest of many, both politicians, lawyers and laymen, in reviewing the constitution of the Republic of Iceland. Thank you.